Hey everyone, it's um, contest time again. I don't really care to enter contests normally, but I just wanted to do this as a salute to Rob Wiseguy82, whose channel's still pretty new. He's past the 100 subscriber mark, and I know that's one of the really important uh, milestones when you've got a channel. And uh, so he's doing a little contest in celebration of that. He actually is offering some pretty cool prizes but um, that's not what this is about. Uh, if you haven't checked him out, I'm sure I'll put a link below. Um, he's kind of a collector of, for the most part, small press rarities, I'd say, um, and a aficionado of the more outside of the mainstream path comic books. Um, at least that's my simplistic peg of, <laughs> of what Rob's up to. And he has four simple questions, only I don't think he realized how complicated these questions really are, <laughs> for me anyway. Um, the first question is, what's your favorite beer? And I, I was about to have a stout, a uh, Murphy stout. I, I guess my favorite stout would be um, Guinness. Oh, I don't want to spill this on my computer keyboard. Um... But I change my mood all the time of what my favorite beer is. One of my big fallbacks is Laguanitas IPA, um, which is a California beer that I think now has national distribution. Um, and I just go through, I cycle through so many different moods. Uh, a favorite beer to get at, um, to get out of the keg at uh, bars around Portland is called Vidmir Hefeweizen. Um, a Hefeweizen is a wheat beer, and if done properly, it's not filtered. And they serve Vidmir with a lemon, the Vidmir Hefeweizen. I think Vidmir or Widmir has somewhat national distribution, but their bottled Hefeweizen would be meaningless. It, it does not taste at all like their Hefeweizen in a keg. But that's kind of your light, summery beer or when you want something not too heavy. Um, I, you know what, when I want a really strong stout, uh, Deschutes Brewery's Obsidian Stout, this f tastes fairly light compared to something like that. So, I don't know, I'll make it Laguanitas, um, as a beer you can afford to have on a fairly regular basis, and uh, that is extremely good. Um... And then he asks the book that started it all. That's an easy question, but long-time viewers have seen me mention um, Avengers 93 a bazillion times, Roy Thomas, Neil Adams, sort of the beginning of the kree Scroll War. I was 10 or 9, 9 or 10 years old, picked this up at a drugstore, um, forced my parents to buy it for me. And I just recent, I, I have lots of reprints of it, and about, um, I don't know, three months ago, I bought an actual copy of it. Um, not perfect, but in pretty good condition. I, I don't care about really perfect comics, but I did want it fairly nice. The funny thing is when I got it, and maybe it's just because I've, you know, I've, I, I have it in hardback. I have it in Baxter paper reprints. I have it uh, in black and white reprints. I have it in digital reprints. I expected more of a like a rush of nostalgia when I bought it and for some reason I didn't get that which I have gotten when I picked up some old Commandy comics for instance or some other Jack Kirby DC comics which were amongst the early comics that I encountered um, so I don't know what what went wrong but one thing um, when I opened it up it's one of these you know it's sort of square bound uh, 25 centers, right? You know, they the issue before would be 15 cents. This was 25 cents, and then they went back down to a smaller size and charged 20 cents. But um, the staples are there in the side of the paper. You know, uh, well, you can kind of see it on the back cover where the staples are. And I wonder, is that where they really stapled these comics normally? Somehow that really bothered me. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at my other 25 centers and see if they have staples there. I don't remember noticing staples so distinctly when I would open the, the splash page. 
I mean, this is an amazing comic, and, um, you know, forever after I was addicted. And many of you have heard that story before. Um, if you search through my videos, um, you can hear me talking about it. So that was his second question. That was an easy one. But his third question is another hard one. Um, he says, uh, show, talk about your unknown gem, and current ongoing comic book that you're the only one who's getting it um, here in the community, uh, obviously, because someone else must be getting it. <laughs> and I racked my brains. I could think of some comics that I got that have just ended that I'd never saw anyone else get, like Rook from Dark Horse. Um, further back, Sergio Argones's Funnies. Uh, was that also from Dark Horse? No, that was from um, Bongo Comics. And I think I was the only one I ever saw who was getting that. Um, maybe Spiro.Geek picked up some back issues. I'm not sure. Finally, I thought of one that I don't think I've seen any of my other friends, because a lot of people on here get some pretty obscure comics, including Rob, and um, keep me from being feeling that obscure. But uh, from Oni Comics, uh, Kaiju Max, I have uh, faithfully been buying every issue of this uh, prison story for giant kaiju monsters. And uh, the more I read it, the more I love it. It's kind of depressing. Uh, very dark humor, I guess. And a lot of soap opera and drama, or melodrama, I guess would be the right word. Um, but it's on hiatus right now. But I guess, I think I can count that, because I saw in Solicits, Kaiju Max Season 2 is coming out... Um, in April or May and I think coming out in March it will be the trade of the first six issues and that will be um, <clears throat> I think a 995 trade or 999 trade so I highly recommend everyone grab that trade and see if they want to jump on Kaiju Max season 2 I think a lot of you would want to um, so that's that's the best I can do for an unknown gem <clears throat> And his final question, which he is asking so that people will share other people they like on YouTube, but he wants you to shout out um, two or three comic channels. Um, what's, what does it say here? Two or three comic channels that you anticipate the most. And I really don't like playing favorites. Um, you know, there's probably a hundred people out there, and I have a thousand subscriptions. <laughs> um, although I, most of those people aren't making videos anymore, I have a feeling. Um, but uh, I'm sure there's at least a hundred, hundred and fifty people out there when they make videos, I want to watch them, um, which sounds insane when I say that out loud. But um, I guess I'll pick a few off the top of my head. Um, you know, the first person that pops into my head is Ghost Critic. And I wish he made more videos now that he used to, you know, put out two a week minimum. And that was great. Um, so every time I see that he is putting out a video, especially his monthly reviews now, I uh, highly anticipate it. Um, someone who is very regular right now is uh, Jared Osborne. And I'm always happy when I see his videos in the feed. Um, I like his contest entries, they're always interesting, and his weekly poll is always more than just showing covers, it's an interesting commentary. Um, I always look forward right now to Canon and Comics, um, when I see that she has another video up, I'm excited. Boy, now I'm opening up this can of worms, I'm only supposed to do two or three. Uh, but what, they just keep popping one after another, Wednesday Serial, Reader1717. Um, Chad's Attic. I hope Chad is still going to do more um, reviewing and not just featuring what the new comics of the week are. Anyway, uh, I, I anticipate so many people's videos that this is a bad question. <laughs> but cheers to Rob. Um, I anticipate his videos. Uh, I feel like he has his own unique lo-fi style. Um, I hope he never changes in the essentials of his integrity. 
and um, I'll, I'll be watching you soon, Rob. Talk to you later.